if you would like to state the name. Okay, uh, William Jankowiak. I'm a professor of anthropology at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. What did you do when you were confronted with that problem? Well, there's this old story of this and that. Okay, maybe, maybe I should do that. Okay, that's nice. Or, you know, we used to say this, but then I know this new story about, well, that, you know, the, the new tale seems to make some sense to what I'm feeling. The structuralists are correct. All stories seem to have a beginning, middle, and end and have the same structural logic. These stories are also about values of how to live a life, how to realize and achieve certain basic human emotions, not only just to get food, but to find love, to, to handle sexual jealousy, to prevent a sexual uh, excess. Uh, all of these things are basic to us being human. And you see these manifested in tales of people who achieved or did not achieve. And therefore they resonate because they speak to perhaps an underlying morality. If not an underlying morality that this is what you should do, certainly an underlying existential questions that seem to haunt us. What makes humans so amazingly creative is that we are seldom well integrated. There's probably a survival value to that. Since we can never be at peace with ourselves, we are very restless species. And we're always trying to do A and B, sometimes simultaneously. Essentially, we ourselves, if you will, constantly be torn between competing obligations, competing desires. And what stories do, they are attempt to give a grand narrative that are pleasing to a particular historical time to a particular cultural people about how everyone wishes everyone would resolve the problem in this way. The grand story that each culture creates takes that and tries to give a spin on how they think the junior generation should resolve that or how even everyone of the senior generation should resolve it. However, humans being what they are, there's always a self and the self does not always follow or surrender their desires for the good of all. Often that everyone would be happy if the person does not pursue a lover, but really forsakes it for the good of harmony. But we know if humans always did everything for the good of harmony, we would be ants and we would not be what we are, the one of the most cooperative species in the world and one of the most self-centered species in the world. And the narrative tale is about trying to integrate or blend those two things together. That is why the story continues and has continued as long as we have human memory. Stories are or anthropomorphism, that is, you're, you're taking something and you're presuming human emotions into it, either real or imagined, and that they're compelling or not compelling to the degree in which they hit value conflicts that are present in society. And the value conflicts can, can really change by history. Though there's probably some commonalities to the whole thing. Uh, to what degree do I give to myself? To what degree do I give to the family? How much do I give to my parents? How much do I give to the other? They're probably just timeless. But what it is, is different cultures come down on how you should resolve it. When I was doing research on China, I was struck by fox fairy stories. These are written in 6th century AD, way before any Westerner contacted anyone. And these was a spirit who took a human form, generally of a beautiful woman, seduced a man, till he fell in love with her. And then he, she, he would turn back into the fox spirit, that's what it was, the fox spirit, and eat his heart. Notice the metaphor, and the heart in China, like America also, was the center of emotions. Uh, but there were also stories, though, where the woman fell in love with the man as a spirit and refused to kill him or revert back. So it's like it became embodied of, of this, okay? And these were tales told in the marketplace. Now this is a range merit society, 
But, so, but clearly, if people are writing on this and people are reading it, it's speaking to something. Now, the morality is you couldn't move on that, but there were stories of people running away, but these were really the rarity. But the, the attraction in the marketplace was those stories. So you have that. Now, what's it going to, going to here to change? Well, what you have now is you have lots of stories of people just breaking away from their parents and running away and living happily ever after, which would fit individual ethos, right? You're an individual, you should move on. You're no, you know, the family's secondary to you. It's important, you're part of it, but, but it, you, know, you don't surrender everything. Story, if stories are about moral codes and how to read moral conflicts, which are, well, morality is, is just a conflict of, of, of desires and interests. And, and there's always conflict of desire and interest, so how do you resolve it? And the, and the culture says, well, given this dominant value, you should resolve it this way. So what you see with the rise of individualism with the single child generation, uh, this is everyone 32 and younger, um, is, is a greater respect for self, a greater respect for self-opinion, a greater respect for self-assertion. And so the stories are going to reflect this new value present in society. What has happened in China is the rise of individualism by the single child generation. Uh, when I mean individualism, I'm talking about your mind. People have intense subjectivity, intense ideas that I have a right to pursue myself, I shouldn't surrender in. Uh, with that, uh, uh, love-based marriages are just really rampant all through China. When I was there in the early 80s, that was not true. Now, it wasn't that they didn't have love, but people thought you might have it, but you should surrender to this thing. Or, or they thought you should always be aware of your setting in other places. Now, Chinese individualism is not to the extreme state of American individualism is, but it is really strong. What has this story, this narrative element of looking for the past into the future, uh, the tale of beginning, middle, and end, uh, how does it portray in contemporary society? I think you see it everywhere. The modern story is our TV programs. They're, the soap opera, in some sense, is a modern story. A couple of years ago, in the 90s, I read this somewhere that, I don't know if you ever remember Andy of Mayberry, it's on the old show with Andy Griffith, and the little town with Gomer Pyle and that, and little folky values of how they resolve conflicts in the family, or a mischievous boy who cut school, and he had these little tales. Well, it was an interesting interview with American people, and they'd watch that, and they got, parents got ideas about how they could address a similar problem. So there's a good example of a film narrative story, but it was a narrative story. It wasn't stream of consciousness, silly. And, and the parents said, that's a good thing to try, okay? I knew people who watched this thing on PBS, Caillou, or Clifford the Big Red Dog. And these are really, again, little stories. They're couched to seven and eight-year-olds. Okay. Uh, but yet they're also really talking about how you should behave in that situation. So stories are really moral guidance. You know, now stories in some sense are action, but even the actions count in some sense of morality tale. These are not amoral psychopaths with a lot of action. Uh, uh, on the other hand, you can't remember them because it's just a backdrop. Stories are, the really good ones, we walk out troubled because it's not clear and we go, oh, that's interesting. So again, stories are adapting to new changes and new times and new values that are coming in. But what's universal is still boy attracted to girl, boy wanting to bond with girl, girl wanting to bond with kin, okay? And which one takes priority? And that's the question that's constantly changed because different people are arguing you should do this and you should do that, okay? I think we had two. It was, I hope that was on because I couldn't repeat it. <laughs> <laughs>